In the last video, we made and finished the model for Mina, and in this video, we'll be setting up the UV map to get ready for texture painting. I'll be doing a full manual unwrap and then hand packing this to get as optimal as the UV space as possible. This mapping process can get a little bit repetitive, so I'll try to make it as interesting as possible to watch. So with that, let's get started. The first part of the model that I decided to unwrap was the ear, since I had to start somewhere. I also alluded to last video that the ears were going to play a role as a recurring issue that'll be popping up throughout this series, so I guess it's fitting to start here. All right, so the key key to unwrapping something properly is to understand its underlying geometry. And I know that the ears are structurally just cubes, after all it is what I made them out of. So to unwrap it, I'll be marking the bottom to form a flap, starting from one corner and going along the long edge to the other side. I'm going to be doing this from the bottom, along the left side, and up to the top. So when I jump over into the UV editor, this should allow the ear to fold out flat when I unwrap it. And since the other ear is a mirror copy, minus the obvious clip taken out of it, I'm going to be seaming it in the exact same way, taking into consideration the mirroring that went through. Marking through the clip and continuing down to the bottom. Now, you might have noticed that I haven't brought up or mentioned live unwrapping so far. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like using live unwrap. It's nice to not have to hit the unwrap button every minute or so, but it also auto packs the islands, which to me is a problem. It tends to undo my progress by messing with the islands that I just got done stacking to optimize the texture space. So yeah, I'm not using it. After I finished the ears, I moved on to the head. So the first thing I did is went ahead and marked the neck to remove it from the torso. And then I began marking up the back of the head. Now with the mirror modifier on, when I unwrap the head, it's only going to give me the left side since the right side doesn't technically exist. But at this moment, I wasn't really sure if I was going to map out the head fully or not, so I treated it like it wasn't mirrored. I also started to cut along the top and left side to allow it to flap out when it was unwrapped. I gave it a quick unwrap and then realized that that was not going to work, so I decided to change my approach. What I did instead was I select the face region and did a UV project to get a nice forward facing map, but not before clicking the wrong thing and then struggling to find the correct one. Once I got it, I took these faces and pinned them on the top and bottom in the UV editor to prevent them from moving, but also allowing them to flatten out. Once that was done, I selected the head again and refreshed the map to snap it to the now pinned face region. Once I did this, I realized that the map would take up less space if the top flap folded down towards the left side of the head and not the front. And then I cut a seam at the chin to alleviate the stretching that was happening from the neck. I felt that the head was done after that, so I moved on to focus on the torso. I decided I wanted to work on getting the overcoat done first. After I had isolated it and hid everything else away, I realized that when I extruded it down, it also took with it the sharps from where it originally ended on the torso. So I took a second to get rid of them. Once that was taken care of, I took to marking the area where the arm connected to the coat as a seam, since that's also naturally where a clothing seam would be found. I also decided that since I was in the neighborhood to stop by and mark her wrists as well as the outside of the cuff before cutting all the way down her arm. I took a hot second to change the music I was listening to and then went back to the main part of her coat. While holding control and right clicking, I selected the entire inner edge of the coat and marked it so that way I could see how the overcoat unwrapped as it was, which worked beautifully. Then I was left to decide what to do with the inner part of the coat. I marked a seam at the top to cut it out entirely and then unwrapped it, and my plan was simple. I wanted the inside to share the same texture as the outside since I had plans to put wrinkles on the coat and they should show up on either side of the fabric. And the goal now was to figure out what faces on the inside corresponded to its parallel partners on the outside of the coat. It seems that when I unwrapped the inside of the coat, Blender had flipped it upside down. Once I figured that out, I turned on vertex snapping and started snapping points from the inside of the coat to the outside of the coat. Something unfortunate about this whole process and why I don't like to use live unwrap so often is the fact that once I'm done doing this stacking procedure, there's no way that I have found to sort of glue these islands together. Pinning them just sort of prevents them from being recalculated again, but the auto packing nature of the live unwrap will unstack them again. So again, I tend to leave live unwrap off. After I put a pin in the torso part of the overcoat, I moved on to unwrap the arms, which unwrapped as well as you expected. And then I got to the inner waistcoat. I was a bit more tentative on how I was going to go about handling this area, However, I'll get to that in a second. For now, I'll just sort of cut it down the center back part of the neck and down the waist to flatten it out. From there, I moved on to the tail where I marked it off at the base and then went all the way down to the tip where I made a flap at the end to the tail so it would properly fold out. Now, back to the waistcoat. I wasn't sure if I was going to include the lower half of the pelvis into the waistcoat island. On one hand, it might save me some texture space if I do so, but it also might look weird if the textures begin to bleed into each other. So I did the easy thing first and marked the legs off to get them out of the way. When I went back to go test that idea, I realized I hadn't fully marked the overcoat to fully split from the model. So using my big 
big brain I ran a seams from island function to automatically mark the seams where I had separated them from the UV islands. And then I had to re-clear the seams I just undid to connect the pelvis and weight coat back together. I wasn't really sold on how the UV had turned out. Thought about doing that projection trick I did with the face and then changed my mind. And then when I marked a seam where her taint would be, the UV island did a flip, which amused me enough to move on to the next area. I realized when I moved on to the legs that seams to island function I ran had consequences I hadn't expected. So I removed all the unwanted cuts, marked off at the ankles, and then ran a seam up the back of the leg for a quick, easy leg map. And following the same idea, laid down a seam down the back of the heel. I thought about going along the top of the foot, but then realized that this seam would be readily visible and could easily have been hidden on the bottom of the foot. I marked off the toes and had to get deep into her feet to make sure that I got between the webbings. Someone's fantasy, not mine. The foot unwrapped well, and for the toes, since I was going to stack them, I had to make sure that they were unwrapped in the exact same way. I unwrapped the legs, which also turned out fine, and I was going to move on to the hands when I realized I did a fucky walk, and the seams from island function fucked me again. I had to go and undo all the seams that I had made, and I was so minorly annoyed that I breathed in through my nose sharply. I then moved on to the hands, undid my past mistakes, and continued on with the process. I started by cutting off all the fingers like a bad game of knifey fingers, and then cut them open lengthways like a hot dog. I decided to make the finger tips where it would flap up from, and then did the same thing with the thumb. Then for the palm, I decided to cut from the base of the pinky to the wrist, and when I unwrapped it all, I had realized that I had missed a seam somewhere as the middle finger was still connected to the wrist. At first I thought it was a thumb and tried marking it again before realizing the problem. Once that was solved, I was annoyed that there was a seam right here on the hand, so I got rid of it. It took a second to do something off screen that I can't remember, and then I was blinded by a sea of orange when I unhid the entire model. It was at this point that I was going to begin the process of manually packing the UV islands, and to do that, I had to make sure that the UV islands shared the same taxel density. So to do this, I set up a checker pattern to be displayed on the material, and to make sure it was projected correctly, I had to plug the UV map I was using into the vector. And then I remembered I was supposed to apply the mirroring modifier for a reason I hadn't it explained. I saved my progress for the first time in two hours and for extra safety made a duplicate version of the model that would be keeping the mirror modifiers in case I ever did a big oopsie doodle and had to start over. I sent that version to the shadow realm for the time being and then applied the mirroring modifier and then deleted the boolean modifier which I wasn't even using at this point in the model. Now the reason why I was applying the mirror modifier was because of how I was going to handle the texture for the waistcoat. It is the only area in the whole model where I could not get away with having a symmetrical texture due to the nature of how the coat is buttoned together. Now I had to figure out a way how to re-flatten it to get a decent UV map again. I actually turned on live unwrapping for this process since I didn't want to have to keep clicking unwrap throughout the whole thing. And then I upped the scale on the checker texture to a value that's actually useful. I had uh, kind of forgot to do that. I started to move all the islands outside of the UV space when I had a brief panic attack and reverted my save and losing all my progress. I had forgot to stack the fingers and toes before applying the mirror modifier. So I started over and through the power of vertex snapping, fused her toes together like a friend I knew back in high school. And from there I began constructing the layout for my UV pack. With the checker texture in place, I began sizing the UVs to match each other. There's actually a feature that could do this for you automatically called average island size. However, that would just break the island stack that I just set up, so I'm not going to be doing that. So I continued my process, slowly snowballing up UV islands, making sure that the tactile densities were correct. Unfortunately, this was a rather lengthy process, which was broken up briefly to stack the fingers on each other, one vertex at a time. Now, I would like to say that there is a way that I could have done this by laying them over each other and tried to merge their vertices together by proximity. However, there is no guarantee that this would have actually gone smoothly, so I decided it was just going to be easier to take the long route and just do it all by hand. Unfortunately, UV mapping is one of the more painful aspects of 3D modeling which I wish I could automate. And before you ask, no, I am not willing to drop 10 or 20 bucks on an add-on to make it easier. I am way more content to just bitch about it and not solve my problems. So after 3 minutes of doing this, I was finally done, and I contemplated snapping the thumb in there as well, but couldn't be bothered to do so. And after thinking I was done with setting up the textile density, did I realize that I had forgotten to include the ears. I went back, actually added a name to the material, and then applied it to her ears and went about the process of stacking them. And as I alluded to earlier in the video, I began to run into some annoying problems. I was trying to decide what to do with this flap right here from the clipped ear since they were going to be stacked. I was afraid it would cause some weird projections in this area, so I removed it. And then I went about the process of merging the ears together. I merged over a couple vertices and decided to try something. Since these two islands are, for all intents and purposes, mere images of each other, I was hoping that I could pin just a few areas of the islands I was snapping that, when I did unwrap, the rest of the islands would snap to their respective places. They did not. I was going to have to snap all of them into place. However, the areas where the clip was taken out didn't have respective verts to be snapped to, so I had to leave them alone for the time being, and when the other verts are snapped and pinned in place, I would do another unwrap to get them to straighten out. Of course, even when I did 
did do that, there were still parts of them that were sticking out and I had to cram them back in, which I realized now might have been an omen for a future mistake. Once I finished off the ears, it was time to join the whole model back together again, and to do that, I had to apply the modifiers on the body again, and it was at this point that I realized I had reverted my progress 30 minutes ago and forgot entirely how I originally unwrapped the pelvis region. I accidentally hit the wrong button, which replaced the UV edit display with a render preview. I forgot how to restore it properly, so I just loaded this leaf texture into the display instead. I experimented with a few island configurations to get something that looked familiar or suitable. I tried separating the pelvis from the waist so I could unmap them separately before joining them back together, and I felt that the result from this was adequate enough. Then I started thinking about it and realized that I didn't need the pelvis area to be fully detailed, that it should be symmetrical like the rest of the model. So what I did was I took the UV editor and then fold the island like an omelet. I honestly don't know why I decided to do it this way. I could have probably just set the 2D cursor in the center of the island and folded them that way, but I guess I was so used to doing it at this point that I hadn't really questioned myself at this time. So about three minutes later when I was actually done, I gave the island a quick 90 degree turn to get it facing the right way, and figured since it was the most awkward shape possible that I should start packing around it. So I cleared the board, checked to make sure that the textile densities were correct, and started packing the smallest islands I had in between the nooks and crannies, marking the beginning of my game of UV Tetris. I packed the hands and feet under the pelvis, I put the ears on the left side, it's left, not mine, I put the face on its right side and then realized that I was probably going to have to scale this whole thing down to fit more stuff on here. I packed the cup above the ear, then tried to figure out where the leg would go. Decided to swap out the feet for our leg island, and then slid the tail under there. I tried to put the arms where the hands currently are, but realized that they wouldn't fit. Tried to make it fit through scaling everything down, but that didn't work either. I did eventually manage to get it to work, and then I realized that there was no way in hell that I was going to be able to get that overcoat in here. Definitely not without making some kind of drastic decision. My game of UV Tetris topped out, and I still had three other islands I had to get in here. I had lost. There was no way that I was going to be able to get all these islands into this UV space and have it work properly without sacrificing a lot of Texel space. So instead of giving in and accepting defeat, I did what any angry child would do when they lose at a game. I took that board and snapped that motherfucker over my knee like a Kit Kat bar. Fuck the rules. I do what I want. And so that's what I did, taking what was left of the board that I got done destroying and packing the rest of the islands where they could fit, leaving only the overcoat hanging outside of the UV space. I did a quick scale to reduce the size of all the islands. This had an unfortunate effect of throwing the inside part of the overcoat out of alignment with the rest of it. And after some minor adjustments to get everything as neatly packed as possible, I activated my trap card by taking a quick screenshot of my UV layout and pasting it into GIMP. The plan was to get it down to a resolution as close to 256 and then export the image into Blender to use as my texture. And for whatever reason, I decided I wanted to figure out what the ratio of the image was by finding the lowest common denominator instead of just setting the height resolution to 256 and moving on. I did the brain blast and then did exactly that, and then I exported the image into my project directory. I took this texture and loaded it into the shader setup, put it in the UV edit display, and then fit the UV maps into the new UV space that I created by scaling them on the x-axis from the 2D cursor. And so, the moral of the story, fuck Tetris. And with that, we now have a complete and functional UV map. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe or leave a comment telling me that you like this video. It's one of the only ways that I know that it's worth continuing. If you want to support what I do, you can support me on Ko-Fi or check out any of my other important links down below. But other than that, yeah, that's all I have to say, so see ya.